All right, today we are making corner post sausage pizzas. So we wanted to show everybody how you can make pizzas at home. You don't have a lot of time. What's, how can you buy all good ingredients and make affordable pizzas to feed your family all week? Or to binge watch something and have them all at once, however you want to do it. So we went to Trader Joe's and got dough for $1.19 each. We got a couple of beautiful peppers from, where did we get the peppers? Uh, those are from Whole Foods. Whole Foods, two fifty-seven for the peppers. Marinara, we have this lovely organic marinara from Whole Foods. We have four of those, grand total of $9.96 on those. We've got these beautiful mushrooms, Jenny's cutting up, which are from Natural Grocers. And they were $2 a pound. Yes. And Shane over here is off camera. Let's get a little cameo of Shane. And he is. What are you doing, Shane? I am shredding mozzarella cheese that we can use for topping on the pizza. And the lovely brand that we found was another Whole Foods mozzarella. Mmm. That our mozzarella was. Two ninety nine each, twenty nine bucks for the cheese. Somewhere out here we have some arugula for color. Oh, it's in the fridge. It's in the fridge. Spent a buck ninety nine on the arugula. Our corner post sausage. Mmm. Eight dollars and fifty cents. Grand total for all of these. 10 pizzas, all of our ingredients, $64.82, which is $6.48 per pizza. Somebody out there is going to check my math on that. Let's call it under seven bucks. You can make pizzas. This is, uh, we'll see how long it takes. We started about, what are we, 10 minutes ago? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're shooting to have this all done in about a half an hour. And then those would be pizzas that we can eat all week. As you're witnessing, witnessing the lovely Corner Post crew creating tasty lunches to eat this week. And so, uh, yeah, we'll come back in a sec and we get a little farther on ingredients and we'll see uh, how it comes out. And we're back. So, what are we doing here, Jenny? We are rolling out our pizza doughs to the size that we want. And then, we're going to pop them into the oven for about just under 10 minutes to par-bake them, throw all the toppings on, and we're ready to freeze them. How big uh, are you supposed to make them? This That's kind of up to like, you. Uh, you want a thin crust or a thick crust? Shane is struggling with that one. I'm working on it. I'm getting there. It slowly comes, it slowly pours. Um, now it's kind of up to you what size you want. You can make them really thin to lower your carb intake if you please. Mm -hmm. um, but most of these, they're a pound each, so it's roughly about a 12 inch pizza. Okay. One pound makes a 12 inch pizza for the average crust thickness. So we didn't add earlier, so we, you just need a little bit of flour, which um, if you don't have flour in your home, get some. And hopefully that that's simple. That's uh, not a major cost overall. Maybe adds what? 
for a big four. bag of like five pounds, maybe four bucks, yeah. if you're getting organic. There you go. Get good flour. Okay, so we'll get these all load, uh, rolled out. I'll show you we've got got our our sausage cooking over there and our peppers and mushrooms which you want to cook takes about how long to brown the sausage? Um, probably about five to eight minutes and same thing with the veggies I'm just getting them cooked a little bit so they can go right onto the pizza. So that same five six minutes or so. And it's easy to do as you are just rolling out your dough so you can multitask it, cut down your time. Okay. Alrighty, so we'll get that cooked up. We'll get the rest of these flattened out. We got all of our cheese ground up with we like to use this little food processor. It'll take you a while with a uh, hand box a grater. Hand box grater, but Maybe you got a kid that needs something to do. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, there you go. We'll get these um, all put together. We've got the oven preheating at 350 degrees. And uh, yeah, we'll check back with you here in a minute. Okay, so this is a vital step in the process here. We uh, on the dough you want to pre you want to partially bake the dough. Do you want to fill us in on how we do that, Jenny? Yeah, we're rolling out raw dough right now, and then we will put it on. We're using one pizza uh, round and then just a cookie tray. So one's perfectly round, the other one's a little bit squared, and you bake it until you can basically pick the dough up without it ripping on you. Okay. Um, and then we can put all of our toppings on. We can either freeze it, so you can pull it out of the freezer and just pop it in the oven to finish cooking it. Or from here, we could put our all of our toppings on and just finish baking it, and it's ready to go. Okay, so we pre-baked it for how long? You said? Uh, it was between five and seven minutes. Okay. We just kept touching, like on when the dough is on the pan. If you can lift it up without it stretching like this then You're it's going to be ready. Alrighty, so we'll get these things uh, topped up we'll, and we'll get them cooked. Okay, so what we were talking about that we're doing here, when, when you want to do a bunch of these pizzas to uh, to, to get them to where they're, they're kind of ready for you to thaw them out and cook them. What Jenny's doing here is she's partially baking the crust for five or six minutes. And then we're going to put all our toppings on those. Um, and then at that point we can freeze them. And they freeze really well. All your ingredients stay, stay real fresh. Your pizza stays real crisp when you're ready to cook it. Um, so rather than fully making these, putting all the stuff, cooking them all out, and then freeze them. They freeze a lot better to just partially bake the crust. Put your meat and your toppings on and then freeze those. That's the way to do it. Yeah, it's the difference between the pizza tasting like freshly made pizza and leftover pizza. Because if we were to just cook the whole thing and freeze it and then heat it up again, it's going to just taste like leftovers. It's going to taste like a shoe. This is going to taste like a brand new pizza every time. Brand new pizza. There it is. Alrighty. I'll come back in a minute. I am Possuminius Maximus. I'm here to tell you about my new conquest what are you laughing at? Do you feel the need to laugh when I say the well-known name Possuminius Maximus? Jenny, when are my pizzas done? Right now, go ahead.
Okay. Yeah, so we were just talking um, earlier about if you pre-bake your crust, you end up with a little better pizza. Um, it's a little cheaper to buy the, the dough that we bought. Uh, Jenny was saying if you buy the, um, well, let me it's, say so I don't screw it up. If you purchase the pre-par-baked pre dough that you can just put your toppings on, uh, it was, I think it was 700% more expensive. So there were $7 gotcha. per dough opposed to $1 per dough. So you're basically paying for your convenience and saving yourself, I don't know, like, 40 minutes of rolling out a bunch of doughs. Yeah, that's what we realized in doing this is it it, uh, it adds quite a bit of time to do it this way, which is, is worth it. And it brings the cost to uh, half of what it would be if you bought the... Uh, Already pre, oh my gosh, part eight. Yeah, which is usually like a, like what you see at like a lot of grocery stores in Colorado at Safeway or something is like a baboli or something. Mm -hmm. You know what they do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are that, those are pre pre baked um, and they're twice the price. So if you want twice the price, I'd probably bring these to like fourteen bucks a pizza. Which yeah, you decide. If you want to go for the uh, if you've got the extra time. All in all, it'll probably take us about two hours start to finish. That's kind of where we're on track with. Um, probably more like an hour and a half. Yeah. If you take a beer break or something, you're going to yeah. add. Yeah. All righty. How do we do this, Jenny? Dump. Oh, you just go right there. I'm just going for it. Get some more. So this is kind of just up to personal preference of how much sauce. How saucy you're feeling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Spread it out so it's about between an inch and half inch away from the edge. And get after it with okay. the toppings. And then do, um, do this one? Yeah. I've noticed every cooking show has the dumb guy, which I think that's you, Shane. I think it is. <laughs> that's, not, that's not me. I'm not the dumb guy who no, doesn't know how to cook. Definitely not. I definitely know what I'm doing. Yeah, so if you're watching this video and you don't know who the dumb person is and your family doesn't know how to cook, it might be you. <laughs> if you're asking the question, who is the dumb person in the kitchen? That's probably Not that anyone's dumb. None of our customers are dumb. That's not my point. I'm saying I'm not a very good cook, so Jenny has to tell me how to do it. And voila! Wow! Let's get a close-up of that puppy. You just add all your ingredients like confetti. Look at that tasty treat. So that one is essentially a pizza supreme. Pizza supreme. So yeah, we're gonna do all these a little different to kind of change up, change up what, uh, change up each one of them, right? So some have peppers, some have uh, mushrooms. Some will just be cheese and meats. Oh, we almost forgot we got some cilantro somewhere we need to throw in here, huh? Cilantro. Didn't we? What arugula. did it? Arugula. That's for the very end. Oh, the arugula is for the end. It comes out of the oven, and then you just top it with arugula, and it gives you a nice green additive without feeling like you're eating a ton of veggies. Yeah. It's a good way to trick your kids. Green it up. That's what we do with our beef. Got to have a lot of green in there. That was kind of a bad joke. It's too late now. <laughs> All right, so we'll get these all covered up. Um, How about it? Shane's like gonna. Working in a pizza shop. Look, yeah. you covered in flour, wearing all black. Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah, there you go. Not doing. So we'll get these all the toppings on. We're mixing and matching. Yeah, I'm kind of mix and match what goes where, and we'll get them here in the oven. We got to get this on camera. When we drop one. That's not gonna happen.
Okay, so we're getting them ready to uh, go in the oven here. Is that hot? Zoom her out a little. No. Open it like right to that. Put her on the pan. Oven's been preheating at 350. Throw her in there. How long are we gonna cook it for? Oh, till it's done. Till it's done. Which I would assume is about 12 minutes. 12 minutes, and you will have a tasty corner post sausage pizza. Took us all in all to um, put these together, pre-bake the crust so where they're ready, they're freezer ready. Um, all in all, it took us, oh, what are we at? About an hour and 30 minutes? Hour and a half? Hour and a half, yeah. Hour and a half, yeah. So uh, at an hour and a half, you're, you're ready. We'll wrap them up. What are we going to use? Some plastic wrap? Um, Some non-GMO plastic wrap, mm -hmm. parchment paper. I uh, put parchment paper if you want to freeze several of them together. You just have to put parchment paper between them, and that okay. will make it so they won't stick together. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Are you better off to do either that or you can stack them? That that's kind of uh, dependent on freezer storage space, but you want to let them cool completely before you wrap them. Okay. Or you'll have like a steam effect that will make your dough mushy. Oh, gotcha. Well, we didn't bake these yet, so you... we we par baked oh, the dough, gotcha. so we can so freeze them just as they are. they're still a warm from the pre baking mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, let's just so the idea there is you want to stack them there again. I'm supposed to sympathize with the viewers at home who don't know what they're doing because I actually don't know what I'm doing. That's why they have me. So something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then after it's cooled. Nice and cool. And stack all the pizzas on top of each other with a layer of parchment. And then, yeah, plastic wrap around. Plastic wrap them. So you could do two or three this way if you want. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. What if I put, you know what, here, this is fun. Don't you want to put it under it without wrecking it? Uh, it yeah, it? we'll have to let them cool before we oh, do it Oh, because they're real warm, they stick to the table, so you want to let them set for a while, yeah, huh? And as they get cool, though, the crust won't be as, as malleable. So they'll malleable. be easier, easier to pick up. This Hello. is Kathy. She designs our website, and she'll be enjoying the tasty pizza later. Say hello, Kathleen. Hello, Daniel. Hello. Kathy is my lovely sister. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> yep, okay. so we got some pieces done. Yeah. We yeah, so awesome. we'll let these cool off a little bit before we wrap them up. Uh, we got one in the oven in 12 minutes. We're going to have a pizza party to eat a pizza. Why is everybody looking at me like that? And action! <laughs> yeah, it's a dramatic pause. There it is. A cooked pizza! Very delicious looking pizza and nutritious. And good for the planet with our sustainable grazing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you laughing? It's true. But uh, there you have it. Corner post Tatesy pizzas. One to eat. Pile of them to freeze. That'll feed us. That'll feed us for a while. Mmm, tasty.